it's incredibly important that the voice of young people is heard in our politics. And the youth parliament sitting in the House of Commons is one symbolic way of that happening. Speaker! Welcome to the House of Commons for this, the third annual sitting of the United Kingdom Youth Parliament. We are delighted to have you here. I hope you thoroughly enjoy yourselves. You've got five important topics that you have chosen to debate. Today, we're here to decide our top priority from the issues chosen by over 65,000 young people across the country. Today, we're here to work to improve the lives of the 8 million young people we represent. And it is today we're here to decide what we can do now to help make a better future for all. If we're expected to use public transport and lower emissions, then we should be able to afford it. Lowering costs of transport would also make it more accessible to people who are poor um, and in a less economically sound position than ourselves. We can't really have a system that works for the whole country. We need to focus on transport at more regional levels where it can be achieved more easily instead of national levels. Young people do care about their future and the effects that are going on around them and they want to be a part of the process and change things for the better. And I think that's a, a fantastic example of seeing that here today. What has happened? A young person is now going into university and paying tax, coming away with worrying debts and astronomical costs. So why not bring in things like scholarships? And an increase in scholarships will develop more and more people will be allowed to enter university and higher education. We should be campaigning for our MPs to take responsibility for their actions. They never paid for their degrees, but they expect us to pay for ours. My generation, our generation, didn't cause the economic mess we're in. I suggest that each MP puts their money where their mouth is. There is a choice between poverty, whether you end it or you ignore it. And it's not a choice of a political opinion, it's a choice of futures. And I tell you this, never ever let child poverty back to do the damage it has done to our society over the years. We know that poverty leads to a lack of education, which can then forward and tumble into a life of crime and dysfunction. If we tackle it now and we tackle it early, we can get it before it gets completely out of hand and we can help our society. There are issues that our constituents are concerned about and that Parliament and Government do a lot of work on. So hopefully, after today when the Youth Parliament has chosen its main campaigning priority, there'll be a number of MP colleagues who will be more than happy to help. I think it's very important to engage young people in politics. We need talented, motivated young people to stand for Parliament. And I think the experience of coming to the Chamber, debating in the Chamber, might encourage them to take that further step from student politics into real politics. I am lucky enough to have grown up in a multicultural area where I've had the privilege to learn about other people's cultures. Not all young people have this opportunity. Therefore, I believe there should be more emphasis within the education system to encourage young people to respect and learn from each other's differences. I believe that there are two types of bullying. Direct bullying, which is physical harm, which is when everyone can see, so it's more hard to hide it. And it is indirect bullying, which could be a small remark in the corridor or social exclusion. We need to look at how we can address this issue by ensuring that we sustain our consumerism whilst not damaging the planet to such a great extent. This is all about giving a little to get a lot. And although I don't support this motion, I do believe it is something that must be changed in Britain today. The government has already signed a, a form to say that we have to reduce our carbon emissions by 2015. Let's work with them. Let's help them. Let them help us and we can really make a change. I have been able to call 70 speakers from what we call the back benches. And Every region has been represented, and of those 70, 35 have been men and 35 have been women. It's a really great showcase for young people talking passionately about issues that affect them, and I hope a lot of people are watching going on, what's going on here, but I hope a lot of MPs are watching what's going on here, and a number of them have been coming in and out of the, the chamber. I have to say the downside of this, though, is young people perform so well, the standard of debate is really rather good, the behaviour is impeccable, they're all quite smart, 
So next week, when we're all back for usual business, the, sp the speaker will have a go at us for not speaking as succinctly uh, or behaving as well as the UKYP members have this week. So it gets us into trouble.